Thanks for tuning in to Iron Point Tech. I'm Brandon Stoffer, and today we're gonna to talk about how to check your CPU temperature and provide some recommendations to lower your temperature if you're running too hot. But first, starting with the question, what does too hot mean? If you're able to test your CPU temp at idle, you should be looking from anywhere between 35 degrees to 50 degrees Celsius. That means you're, running, you're not running any programs, you're letting the CPU sit there not exhausting itself, and you're kind of seeing where that temperature fits between that 35 to 50 degree range. Now, if you're running it at full load, if you're running games, something like Warzone or Fortnite, you can experience degrees between 65 to 80 degrees Celsius. That means it's running at full capacity. That means it's, you know, it's getting up there in higher temperatures, which you can maintain long-term without damaging your CPU. Now, running hot is going above that temperatures like 85 degrees, 90 degrees, or anything higher, means you're running at a really high temperature that can damage your CPU long-term. The good thing is though, your CPU isn't gonna be damaged immediately. It's gonna take extended amounts of time in that 90 degree range. You don't wanna be doing it for consecutive hours, for consecutive days, and the good thing is, it's not gonna immediately shut down your CPU, but you will see drops in performance and then the longevity of the CPU is gonna decrease. The ideal situation is keeping that in the 80 degree range so you can have that CPU running for years to come. And because of that, I'm not gonna recommend overclocking your CPU, especially if you're a beginning PC gamer, because if you don't have other parts that can handle that or updated graphics cards, that's it's not really gonna matter if you're trying to up the performance of your CPU. I recommend not touching it unless you're an experienced PC build gamer and that you can actually understand and control the different aspects of the temperature and your fans and just making sure that your, your PC, especially your CPU, isn't gonna be damaged in the long run. Now, in order to test your temperature, you're gonna to need to download a software like Ryzen Master, MSI Afterburner, HW Monitor. I'll provide links below to some of those software that you can click on and go and download to test your CPU temp. I downloaded multiple because I wanted just to see how they compared against each other and where my CPU stood from a temperature standpoint. So I downloaded the tools and I started running at idle and seeing where I was in terms of my temperature. And I found myself to be running pretty hot at times showing that I was in the 60s, potentially low 70s at time if the CPU was ramping up for some background you know, ask at background program that was starting to update itself. One thing is I did have Epic Games Launcher set up to update my games whenever there was an update needed. So sometimes that would run in the background and I'm thinking I'm at idle, but check your task manager to see what your CPU percentage, where your CPU usage is at, just to see why you might be running hot if you think you're at idle. So even looking at that, knowing I wasn't using the CPU for anything else, I was still running really hot. So I knew something was wrong and I wanted to research and look into ways to try and fix that. So the first few recommendations I have to fix that is what's the temperature of your room that your PC is in? Does it typically run hot? Is it cold? Do you have, is it room temperature? Are you moderating that? For the most part, my room is completely fine. We have cold air constantly flowing in. And then you want to check your fans. Are your fans operating at full power? You can go into the BIOS of your motherboard and you can check to see when your fans start kicking on full power. And I noticed my fans start heating up, ramping up, once the temperature is at 70 degrees or above. So I knew my fans were working. I could see them working. I could see that they were running at full, at full speeds. And I was running stress tests in the BIOS. And everything was working fine on that front. One recommendation though is I have two fans in my tower. One's an intake, one's outtake. And I am gonna eventually move to having four fans. Two that are pumping in, two that are pumping out just so it can be a few degrees cooler because the graphics card also tends to expel a lot of heat and I wanna make sure that I'm not cycling in a lot of hot air for that CPU to burn up. And I didn't just wanna test my CPU at idle, I also wanted to test it during a high performance game. So I was checking my temperatures when I was running Warzone and I found that when I was in the loading screens, I was pumping out high 80s in terms of temperature for my CPU, which should not be happening if I'm just in menu screens for the game. So I knew I had to fix something and I checked those first recommendations of what my PC was doing to see, is there anything immediate I needed to fix there? 
last recommendation I have is checking your fan, your actual CPU fan, and the thermal paste that you have loaded. I remembered that when I was building my PCU, I had my AMD stock fan turned one direction, but I found that there's this AMD logo that was sticking out too far that was blocking the, the slot one for my memory. And so I picked it up and moved it to the other direction, placing it down again. One thing that can happen when you do that is you can create air pockets from the heat sink to the CPU. You can also make sure that you're not actually spreading the thermal paste evenly along your CPU and heat sink. And that can cause issues that can cause that the heat isn't transferring correctly from the CPU to the heat sink and expelling through the fan. So I recognize that that could be a major issue for me and that I needed to take the fan off, wipe off the thermal paste and replace it. So the first thing is looking for a thermal paste that will work for you and for your PC. There are multiple different thermal pastes out there. You have silicon, you have graphite, you have liquid metal, ceramic, and carbon-based different thermal pastes. It can be complicated to understand which one will work best for you. Generally, you know, most will work fairly efficiently. I would still do some research to see which one you'd prefer. My recommendation is ceramic is good for beginners, and liquid metal is something if you're more of an experienced builder, because the danger with liquid metal is if it gets on your motherboard, there's opportunity, there's a chance that it could ruin your motherboard for long term, and we don't want any of that. So I got Corsair thermal paste, it's zinc oxide. Uh, you can pick it up at your local Best Buy. Walmart didn't have any, but uh, so I went around and I picked up some thermal paste. You also need to pick up isopropyl alcohol, which is gonna be used to rub off the thermal paste from your existing heat sink, the existing thermal paste that was on there from the stock cooler. Or if you got an aftermarket cooler, whatever thermal paste you used then. And people recommend different alcohol percentages for isopropyl alcohol, 70%, 90%. I use 70% and it's been working just mm -hmm. fine. So I don't feel like you have to go above that. You also want either lint-free rags, something to use. Some people use paper towels. I would be careful you're not leaving particles behind on your CPU and your heat sink. I actually couldn't find just a bottle of isopropyl alcohol at the stores, so I got isopropyl wipes, and they still worked fine for me. Uh, it's not recommended, but just making sure that you're, you're cleaning it well, you're not leaving any particles behind. So to start this process, I started unscrewing my fan from the CPU. Once I had it unscrewed, I was able to see the situation in the bottom. The thermal paste had you know, spread across most of the CPU. There were certain, there was a section of the CPU that you wasn't getting you know, completely covered. So I realized you know, I wanted to make sure that we had enough thermal paste to put on this next go around. And so I took my isopropyl alcohol wipes and I was rubbing down the heat sink, I was rubbing down the CPU. I got them both fairly clean, making sure you get as all the thermal paste you can get off uh, so that it's a clean slate for when you reapply your thermal paste. So after I did that, then I wanted to apply my thermal paste onto the CPU. There's a couple different methods people have, people recommend of doing lines across your CPU depending on your thermal paste. The standard to go with is just a pea sized drop in the center. You don't want too much that it leaks over the edge, but you don't want too little that it doesn't evenly apply across your whole CPU and heatsink. So I poured in about a pea sized shape and then I put the heat sink back on and then I screwed in my stock fan. After I finished that process, I ran my PC back through those tools that I mentioned earlier to test the temperature and the usage of my CPU and my other components of my PC. And immediately I was seeing that my CPU was seeing much lower temperature at idle. I still wasn't where I wanted to be, but I can tell that my initial application of the stock fan and thermal paste wasn't doing the good, a good enough job. So that replacement I made, I was able to see the temperatures drop a fair amount. I was now sitting in the low 50s. I wasn't sitting in the 60s, early, early 70s like I was seeing before at idle, which was terrible temperatures to be at at idle. Now that that's good to go, I wanna make sure I take some additional precautions to make sure my CPU temps still remain low that's why I'm going to be ordering a couple of extra fans so that I can have two flowing in, two flowing out, just so I can lower it below that 50 degree mark so I can be in the 40s for idle. Now, my CPU is working well. I'm able to run some games without worried about my CPU getting too hot. And with the additional fans coming in, I'm expecting it to drop even lower. 
So that's how I went through my process for fixing my CPU temp. Thanks for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe. Share this with your friends. Click on one of the buttons that are showing up around me. Thanks for listening and catch me next time.